Hello and welcome. In this episode I'm going to show you how to install Ubuntu Server version 8.04 in VMware Fusion for the Macintosh. A couple of things you need first. You need the um, uh, download package for Ubuntu 8.04. Um, to get that go to ubuntu.com slash get Ubuntu slash download. You're going to want the server edition. Um, go ahead and get the um, uh, x86 standard personal computer um, edition of that and then go ahead and start the download. Uh, once you've got that just uh, save it off on your desktop or some other convenient place because you'll need it uh, a little bit later on when you start the install. Uh, the second thing you need is VMware Fusion. VMware Fusion is not a free product but there is a trial version um, so go ahead and download that um, go to vmware.com slash products slash fusion and hit the try now button. You'll need to uh, set up a login account um, and trade off a little bit of information and then they'll send you a license key in, the, uh, in your email uh, and you can download and install the, uh, the application. Uh, so I'm going to assume that you've done those things first and that you've um, got where VMware Fusion installed up and running and we fired it up. Uh, and now to install Ubuntu Server, uh, we're going to do a new virtual machine. And it's going to take us through a uh, wizard here uh, to get this going. Um, so you can read the, the opening uh, remarks and then click continue. Uh, we're going to install Linux and the version of Linux that we're going to install is Ubuntu. Click continue. Um, we need to give this a file name, so I'm going to call this Ubuntu Server. 804 uh, and by default it'll store it in a folder uh, called virtual machines in your uh, in your personal folder area. Uh, so that's where it's going to store that. Uh, you can of course save it uh, someplace else if you like. You could save it to uh, an external hard drive or some other location if you want. Uh, for disk size I'm going to recommend that um, you probably don't need more than four gigabytes um, at least uh, for just taking a look at this product getting started with it. Uh, if you have a project and you know you're going to need more size than that, the number that you select here is the maximum size that this uh, virtual disk uh, can be. So give it some thought. Uh, if you have um, uh, a need for storage, uh, then I would select a, a larger number. But just for playing around with it, uh, four should be plenty. Take a look at advanced disk options. Uh, you have a choice of allocating all the disk space now. That's usually a good idea to check that box. Uh, it'll take a little bit longer for the installation because it has to allocate the disk space, but your virtual machine will run a little bit better, a little bit faster uh, once you get it installed. Um, the trade-off, of course, as I said, is that it will take longer to install. I'm going to leave that unchecked for now, but you might want to consider checking that. Uh, the other thing I'm going to recommend is that you do split the disk into two gigabyte files. The reason for that is that at some point you may want to copy your virtual machine off onto an um, uh, external hard drive, maybe a flash drive. Many of these devices, without jumping through some hoops, won't accept files larger than two gigabytes. So when you select to split the disk into two gigabyte files, you're making it possible to uh, copy that file off onto uh, some other kind of medium. Uh, if you had an existing virtual disk or you downloaded it, you'd check this box and navigate to it, but we're going to be creating a new virtual machine uh, from scratch. So when you have your disk information ready, go ahead and click continue. So we're going to want to check use operating system installation disk image file rather um, uh, than, a, than an actual installation disk. And what we're going to do is we're going to navigate uh, to wherever it was we stored that file. I've got mine here on the desktop. That's where I stored the file that I downloaded. Uh, so I'm going to choose that. Uh, and now you can see that we're going to use the ISO file rather than having to actually burn a CD. We can just use the file that we downloaded directly. And now I'm going to click Finish. And the virtual machine at this point will um, uh, begin to boot. Now a couple of words about the virtual machine. In order to capture your mouse inside the virtual machine uh, so that you can use your keyboard, uh, you actually need to click your mouse inside this and that captures the mouse and the keyboard inside the virtual machine. When you want your mouse and uh, keyboard back, uh, you press the command and control keys simultaneously and that brings your um, uh, 
cursor, uh, your, your mouse and your keyboard back into your, your uh, host system. So go ahead and, and click in the window here. Uh, and that'll allow you to use your keyboard. Now, this is a text-based install. Server is a text-based product, so you won't be using your mouse, but you use your mouse just to get into the uh, into the window to capture the uh, capture the keyboard. So go ahead and select your language. I'm going to select English, uh, and then uh, I would recommend, as a, a matter of practice, that uh, you 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 um, check the CD for defects. Uh, that'll save you some grief later, just in case the download was bad. Uh, if you select this, it will check the CD. Um, uh, take takes a, uh, several minutes to go through it. It'll reboot and bring you back to this point if the CD is OK. Uh, so go ahead and install Ubuntu Server. Just press Enter. And it's going to get the installation process started. Now, once again, you're going to choose the language that you're going to use for the installation. I'm selecting English. Uh, you're going to choose a country, territory, or area within um, uh, where you're located. That will um, establish some uh, basic defaults for how your keyboard works and so on. It's going to ask if you want to detect your keyboard layout. I'm going to suggest you probably don't need to do this because you probably already know what kind of keyboard you have. Uh, if you select Yes, it's going to go through a process where you'll need to type in several keys and it'll try to figure out what keyboard you've got. But I would suggest tabbing to no and pressing enter. Uh, and then you can simply select your keyboard from a list. I'm going to select USA um, and USA again. As you can see, there are a number of alternatives. And my guess is you probably know what kind of keyboard you have. Uh, so that's the easiest way to do that. And it's going to go through some detection processes, scanning processes, try to figure out what you've got. At this point, it's going to try to configure the network with DHCP. I'll talk about that a little bit later. If this fails, um, uh, you have a chance to rerun it. Uh, but you really do need to figure out what the problem is with networking. Uh, if it doesn't uh, get a DHCP lease at that point, uh, and um, um, again, I'll, I'll show you some uh, uh, tricks on that a little bit later. Uh, now select a host name for the system. This is the name of the computer uh, that uh, you're going to be installing. So I'm going to select Ubuntu Server 804. Um, name's not critical, but I wouldn't do anything too complicated here. Try to make it short, uh, one word. Uh, tab and then click and hit Enter to, to continue. It's going to set up the clock. You need to pick your time zone here, so arrow to whichever time zone uh, is appropriate for you, and press Enter. Now it's going to ask you about partitioning the disks. Uh, this might look a little bit scary, but this is not going to do anything to your Macintosh disk. This is only going to format the disk file that we created when we first started up the virtual machine. So this is perfectly safe within the context of the Fusion product. Uh, there isn't any reason to uh, use a manual installation or to try to figure out the parameters. Just let it figure it out. So the default selection there, guided, use entire disk, is what you want for this installation. So make sure that's highlighted and press Enter. Uh, and you can press Enter again. This is just confirming your choice. Now at this point, it's going to uh, display what you selected for the disk partition. At this point, you do have to arrow back to yes uh, and press yes to continue. And, and this is a safety precaution. If you were actually doing this on a, on a full system uh, rather than within um, uh, the, the VMware Fusion product, uh, you would definitely want to think twice before you hit yes because it does go out and, and erase and format the drive. In this case, the drive is only that virtual disk that we created, so there's no harm here. And it goes through and configures a number of things, and then starts installing the base system. So we'll pause here.